Hey, Thomas, do you prefer Tommy or, or Thomas? I've never even asked you that. Uh, I don't really care. I like Tommy. It's fine. Tommy. Okay. Can, yeah. you say, can you say your last name for me? Because I always give it my best shot, but not being a French speaker, I feel like I'm coming up a little bit short. <laughs> to, to be fair, even in French, they cannot pronounce my name. So that's <laughs> fine. My name is Moncaisen. They say Moncaisen. Moncaisen. Okay. That's actually a little yeah. bit easier than uh, what I've been saying. I've been adding an extra syllable in there. <laughs> Very cool. So th the name, is it uh, uh, French Guiana heritage? Is that where, uh, where it comes from? Uh, no, it's from my dad. So um, I was born in the north of France. So it's like close to Belgium. So okay. they speak Dutch there too. So it's more Dutch. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. That does look like a lot of uh, Dutch names I've seen too. So, okay. That adds up. Um, so this season so far, this has to be a, a strange one. It is a strange one for everybody. Um, you're a veteran here in Pittsburgh, but um, no one's experienced anything like this before. So how has it been to adjust to have that big delay right after training camp? You guys were all set for the season, then you had to shut it down, get it ready to go again, and, and now you're right into the mix of the season. So um, how do you feel you've adapted to all of that? Yeah, so it wasn't easy when they decided to uh, delay the season because we didn't have any updates about when we're going to start to play again. So it was uh, tough. Um, and also to stay at home, lockdown, you don't train. So it's not easy to stay in shape. Uh, I think we did pretty well. Uh, we started to do a training camp as soon as the league allowed us to do so. And then uh, it's business, you know, you have to be ready, get your games in. And the season is pretty short, so we have to be uh, successful right away. You know, last year we struggled a little bit. Uh, after 11 games, we had, I think, one win, uh, three losses and seven ties or something. And right now we can do that because, like, that's only 16 games this season. So, yeah, we try to be as sharp as we can, you know. You guys are three and two now going into this week's matchup against New York Red Bulls too at Highmark Stadium. Does three and two feel about fair to you, or do you think that uh, you guys have, have left some results out there so far? Yeah, I think we left some uh, results out, um, especially that indie game. I think uh, I think they got really lucky. That was an unbelievable goal from from Pasha. Um, so it was a tough loss. I think everybody was disappointed. Um, and then at New York Red Bull, we lost points at the very end of the game again. So it has been really frustrated. Um, we're going to try to do our best to bring the three points uh, this weekend to make sure that we we play well as well. And, um, and yeah, I think I think we should do better. We should do better. But uh, we still have some games left and, and we'll be fine, I think. Just speaking about you personally, you're listed as a defender now on the team sheet. You played a little bit more midfield when you first came in. What would you consider to be your role on this team? Um, I like to, even though I'm playing uh, center back right now, uh, if you actually watch the game, sometimes I bounce in the midfield. And um, I think that's, I like that position. Yeah. When I was in France, I was playing center back. And then when I came in America in college, I played more midfielder. And, uh, and right now I play kind of both at the same time. And I think that's the perfect positioning for me. So I really like it. I really enjoy uh, my position on the field. Yeah. Are positions almost uh, irrelevant in soccer today in some ways because there does appear to be more flexibility, more of that maybe total football approach that has been talked about for, for decades. The, the Dutch pioneered that back in the day. But uh, there does seem to be more interchangeability in positions. Are you seeing that yourself in your pro career? Uh, yeah, I feel like even in Pittsburgh, there is a lot of players who can play a lot of different positions. And everybody has to be aware of the tactical part of the game. Um, so you cannot stuck at one position. And also, I feel like for me, to make it to the next level, I had to be able to be, uh, as uh, how you say that, you can play a lot of positions at the same time, you know? Yeah, flexible. It's, it's also, yeah, yeah flexible. Like, that's the skill set, I think, that you need. 
Well, you've had to adjust to some new running mates back there on the uh, on the defensive line. You have Skylar Thomas in there. You've seen some of Hunter Ashworth as well alongside Thomas, more of a veteran. I talked to him last week and, and Ashworth, a, a rookie in the pros too. But how has that been adapting? Because you had for the last couple of years, some guys in Joe Greenspan and Toby Adewale that have since moved on. So um, where, where would you rate the uh, adjustment period, um, getting used to playing alongside those new guys? Um, um, I think it's, um, how to say, yeah, I've been used to play with Toby and Joe a lot. And now that's new players, they, they need to adapt to the Bob system, you know, the Bob tactical, uh, tactical part of the game. And um, I think so far we did, we did uh, well, but we can do better. And uh, obviously, I think it was easier for Skylar Thomas to adapt because he got experience in the game. And, but I think Hunter did pretty good, and, and I think he's going to get better too. Um, but I think we could uh, we could play better defense, and we need a little bit time. But like I said, we don't have that much time. Um, so we keep working on it every day, watching a lot of videos, and and we talk a lot on the field too to make it uh, as the best as we can. What can you guys take from that performance against the Red Bulls last time out? It was the end of a busy week for you. It was three games in eight days. There was travel involved, a couple of trips, in fact, in that span. And, uh, well, the Red Bulls are a tough team to play against because they play at a quick pace. And that's what your manager, Bob Lilly, was talking about earlier this week. So uh, how can you guys handle that a little bit better and, and get the three points that you need here this weekend? Uh, I think we need to keep the ball a little bit more than we did the first game. I think we lack of that um, in the first game. We played too, uh, too direct, I would say. And I think if we keep the ball more, we would control the game and we would have more chances. Um, but also, I think um, our pressing wasn't great that game. And I think we could do better next game. Hopefully, we, it will work this time. And we need to stay focused the full 95, 98 minutes to make sure that we, we, we get those, those three points. When I look at your bio on the team website or on Wikipedia, what stands out to me first and foremost is you play a lot of minutes. You don't miss a lot of time. You don't miss a lot of games. You missed a couple of Hounds matches last year, but it was for international duty and once for a red card suspension. So why do you think you are uh, – able to, to put in that kind of a workload on the field and have that longevity and that, and that endurance? What's, what's important for you to, uh, to maintain that level for that long? Uh, the first thing, I think the coach trusts trust me, so he puts me on the field. That's, that's, that's the first thing. But then I try to, um, to have a healthy life outside of soccer and – during the off season, I work I work out a lot, and I make sure that I'm in shape. And yeah, that's sleep, what I eat, and everything that that comes with it. You know, I just try to stay in shape, out of injuries, and take care of my body. When you were growing up in France, who were some players that you looked up to or tried to emulate as you were finding your way as a young footballer? Uh, I was watching a lot of games, a lot of soccer, um, but they're not like, I like Sergio Ramos, he's not French, he's from Spain, but I would mm -hmm. watch a lot of uh, those games, uh, Thiago Silva too. I, I would watch a lot of the center back play because that was my position at the time. Um, but yeah, I watch a lot of soccer and I would watch it even for fun or even I just, uh, and I analyze the game tactically and stuff. I really like I really like that part too. Okay. You started your career back home uh, in France and, and a little bit in Europe in general, but then you came to America. You went to the University of Charleston, West Virginia. You helped the Golden Eagles to their first ever national championship in 2017. And you won NCAA D2 Player of the Year in the process too. So what allowed you to excel in college soccer because it is a change it's a shorter season uh you're just playing in the fall 
basically. I know you have a spring season too, but uh, all that counts is right there in that, in that tight window. So how did you adapt to that? Uh, I mean, it was easy because the environment in Charleston was good. Everybody was uh, focused towards soccer and um, the coaching staff was really good too. And they would tell us what to do. And, um, and also my teammates were really good at the time. So it was easy to adapt. Um, and they, they guide us, you know, the older player, they would guide us to what do you have to do to be successful during that short uh, season. So, yeah, the, I think mainly it's the work that you put in before you come to your season because the season is so short, you don't get the chance to get in shape during the season. You have to be ready before the season starts, you know. And uh, because we had good players, we would get along. And the mentality was really good, too. I really enjoyed my time in Charleston. That was, really, that was fun, yeah. Do you think that helped you to come over here to get it adapted to the American culture in some ways before you turned pro and ended up with the Riverhounds? Uh, yeah. So in Charleston, there were a lot of international. So the transition was not that brutal, you know. I came over. I hang out with internationals, American, and then I signed in Pittsburgh, and now I'm only around like mainly American people. So the transition was slow and easier for me than changing because the, I think the difference between the culture in France and America is pretty big. And yeah, that was that was the I think that was the right transition for me. I spoke about it earlier, but you got your first taste of international soccer on a on a, a senior stage last year with French Guiana, um, and, and you got to, to play a couple of matches there. So what did that mean to you to have that recognition that, uh, that you would be selected for, for such, a, such an assignment there? Um, yeah, I was really, really happy because there is a pretty big player that play in the professional environment in France. So that, that's pretty, uh, pretty big players. So I was really happy that they, they, they actually selected me. Uh, and the experiences are really, really good there. I have to play uh, against teams, like I travel, stuff that I didn't do before. But the, the better has to come um, next year. There is the, the qualifying round for the Gold Cup. So we're going to try to make the Gold Cup and we're going to play against the Bahamas. And hopefully we, we can qualify. And in terms of what you learned from that environment, did you pick up anything that you could take back with you to, to Pittsburgh? Um, I mean, every time you play a game, you get an experience, you know. Um, I don't have a specific thing, but I think the workload, yeah, when I see, like, pro player from France come over and the way they work, like, I can pick up some stuff and bring them back to Pittsburgh. And last thing for you here, your third year as a Riverhound, that makes you a tied for the, t uh, the longest tenure here in Pittsburgh. So do you feel like a, a veteran guy now? Have you felt your, your role shift as far as um, culturally within the, within the club? You, you can actually help guys get adjusted to uh, Coach Lovely's system and, and get adjusted to Pittsburgh too. Yeah, yeah. I help the new guys to get adjusted with the, the coach's tactic and the coach gave me more responsibilities a little bit because obviously Joe Greenspan was a main guy in defense last year left. So now I need to take that role. Um, but also outside of the field, I know everybody in the offices and stuff. And now like, I can help some people if they need stuff. And yeah, I really like my role now in physical. That's good. Tommy Vankiazil, thank you so much. I hope I pronounced that no a little problem. bit better the second time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Uh, nice. <laughs> thank All you right. very much. I appreciate it. And we'll see you back on the, on the field this weekend.